Happy New Year and welcome to this videotape service by Emmanuel United Church. We welcome all and we are thankful that you're able to join us to worship together in the name of Jesus Christ today. Let us acknowledge the land that we are worshiping upon. We come respectfully acknowledging that we live and worship on Treaty 20 land. This treaty was made with a number of First Nation community called Miche Sagi. Treaty 20 is part of a larger treaty known as the Williams Treaty. These lands that we inhabit and worship upon are ancestral lands of First Nations communities of Alderville, Curve Lake, Hiawatha, Grusale, Rama, Georgina, and Scugog Island. Our relationship with First Nations has been impaired by our desire for ownership of the lands and its resources. These lands at once were a place where many First Nations people raised their families upon, drew their livelihood from, and were stewards of the land and the waterways entrusted to them by their ancestors. Over the decades, as settlers to this land, the past and current generations have dishonored the treaties that were made with the indigenous peoples of Turtle Island and these lands that we now occupy. With the revealing of Canada's history through the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, it has exposed how we have treated our allies. We now seek pathways for a reconciliation for right relations with all First Nation, Inuit, and Métis people in Canada, restoring to health and to wholeness our broken relationship and developing a lasting harmony and peace with one another. Let us now light the Christ candle as a reminder that we come in the presence of Christ. So we gather as a community of faith seeking the light of Christ. Let us be reminded that as we light the Christ candle, we come seeking clarity, seeking truth, seeking hope in the one who has come, Jesus the Christ. May this light break into our darkness revealing the presence of God, its love through the one called the light of the world. Now let us come in the name of Jesus Christ, 
in the call to worship, I ask you to join me. A new year is upon us. It is a time to celebrate new beginnings. We come to step into the new year with faith. People of faith, it is a time to look ahead and hope. We are willing to step into the unknown with hope. People of hope, it is time to walk alongside Jesus. Together, we step forward with Christ, ready to embrace new beginnings as a faithful community of faith. I invite you, if you wish to sing, you're certainly welcome to, from Voices United, hymn number 82, A Light is Gleaming.
let us come as a faith community to pray together. And I remind you to look at the screen because there is a paraphrase of the Lord's Prayer that will be printed for you to join in and pray with me. So together, let us pray. Creator of all that is and all that is yet to come, we stand on the crest of this new year, a year that is filled with new beginnings, wrapped in our thoughts and our fears of the unknown. Let the hope of your presence, God, be the flame that burns away our doubts and fears to expose the possibilities of what it means to follow you. Let the Son of Man, Jesus, lead us into the light of your vision, God, this year. Help each of us to do our part in giving the light of the world the opportunity to transform the brokenhearted, the lost, the forgotten, the hungry, to wholeness. In your name we pray these words, Divine Creator, Thou art are holy. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in this world as it is in heaven. And forgive us our failings, and help us forgive the failings of others. Give to us and all others enough to satisfy the current essentials of life. Save us from a trial greater than our strength, and strengthen us to face our weakness. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to sing along from um, More Voices, hymn number 115, Behold, Behold, I Make All Things New. Behold, 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 I make all things new, beginning with you and starting from today. Behold, 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 I make all things new, my promise is true, for I am Christ the way. Behold, 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 I make all things new, beginning with you and starting from today. Behold, Behold, I make all things new, my promise is true, for I am Christ the way. Today I will be reading from Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. Breath of Life God grabbed me. God's Spirit took me up and set me in the middle of an open plain strewn with bones. He led me around and among them a lot of bones. There were bones all over the plain dry bones, bleached by the sun. He said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Master God, only you know that. He said to me, prophesy over these bones. Dry bones, listen to the message of God. God, the Master, told the dry bones, Watch this. I'm bringing the breath of life to you, and you will come to life. I'll attach sinews to you, put meat on your bones, cover you with skin, and breathe life into you. You'll come alive, and you'll realize that I am God. I prophesied just as I had been commanded. As I prophesied, there was a sound and, oh, a rustling. The bones moved and came together, bone to bone. I kept watching. Sinews formed, then muscles on the bones. Then skin stretched over them. 
but they had no breath in them. He said to me, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man. Tell the breath, God the master says, Come from the four winds. Come, breath, breathe on these slain bodies. Breathe life. So I prophesied, just as he commanded me. The breath entered them, and they came alive. They stood upon their feet, a huge army. Then God said to me, Son of man, these bones are as are the whole house of Israel. Listen to what they're saying. Our bones are dried up. Our hope is gone. There is nothing left of us. Therefore prophesy. Tell them, God the Master says, I'll dig up your graves and bring you out alive, O my people. Then I'll take you straight to the land of Israel. When I dig up graves and bring you out as my people, you will realize that I am God. I'll breathe my life into you and you will live. Then I'll lead you straight back to your land and you'll realize that I am God. I've said it and I'll do it. God's decree. Their world lay in chaos. For the Israelite people, their world had been decimated. A nation that had been ripped apart by the invasion of the Babylonian army around 595 BC. Over 10,000 Jewish people were enslaved. The temple torn down and most of Jerusalem and surrounding area destroyed. King Jehoiakim used a military method that was common in those days. He took all the intellect, the wealthy, the business-oriented, the visionaries, leaving behind all of Israel's weakest people and undesirables. This way, the Jewish nation could not rise up or begin to restore the city of Jerusalem. The city of Jerusalem pretty much remained as the Babylonian army had left it until the exiled ones were set free by the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar in around 538 BC, nearly 70 years later. But with each passing year, the exile hoped for freedom, and their return to Judah diminished daily. Many of the exile people had given up forfeiting their heritage and faith by assimilating into the Babylonian culture. A faith that once was vibrant in the worship of Yahweh had become like dry bones. Jewish traditions were being lost, and so was the Jewish culture and way of life with each passing generation. The Jewish culture and faith were becoming lifeless and without breath. Ezekiel was born into this time of exile and raised in the priestly tradition of Judaism. He became a spiritual and faithful man to Yahweh. Throughout his life, his spiritual connection to the other realm is revealed throughout the writing in the Hebrew book called Ezekiel. In response to a people losing hope of freedom and restoration, Ezekiel had a vision as shared with us today in the Hebrew reading. Ezekiel, in his vision, sees himself in a field filled with death, filled with dry bones. It was a place that was void of hope and life, a place where a great battle had taken place between the Assyrian army and Judah, and the bodies of the armies were left scattered for nature to take its course. It was a lifeless place where life could not be envisioned. 
Here we are on the precipice of a new year that stretches out before us. When you look out over the vastness of the time that will come over the next 354 days that are left, what do you see? Take a moment and scan the landscape of time that has been packaged for us called 2021. Most of us would see the shadow cast by COVID-19 and the possible months that all of us will have to contend with until the vaccine is administered to us and the rest of the population to slow down its advancements in our community and in the world. We also sense that once the cloak of this biological infection is lifted, we will see with clarity the devastation that will be left behind in its wake. Just like those who were left behind in Judah, after the Babylonian army destroyed much of Judah and Jerusalem. Even in this faith community, where much has happened, one continues to sense the unsettling feelings of, will church life ever get back to normal? Will the faith community emerge again? Will Emmanuel United Church ever be the same? Will it continue into the future? Staring into all of these and more, Staring into all of these questions and more, we wonder, will life ever be restored again? Will these dry bones come back to life? At the moment, we seem to be living in exile in our own communities, not sure whether full restoration will ever transpire. You know, I may be over-exaggerating our situation a little, but like Ezekiel, we are in the land of dry bones because of the circumstances and uncertainty that cloud our perspective and hope for what lies ahead this year on all life's front, including our faith. Everything seems a little ambiguous at the moment. I believe we can sense, even feel some of the trepidation that the exiled people of Israel were experiencing as they waited year after year to get back to their homes and pick up where they had left off in their life. Ezekiel in his prayer life had a vision, though, a vision of a place of death, where scattered across a field lay the bones of dead warriors. While in that place, he is commanded by Yahweh to speak to these dry bones, but that once were full of life. But before he does so, Yahweh instructs him. He asks him a question. He says to Ezekiel, Mortal, can these dry bones live? Can these dry bones live? The question was not so much as to whether these dry bones could be restored back to life, but it was a question, do you have faith? Yahweh was asking him about his faith. Can these bones live? And Ezekiel's response comes not from a place of uncertainty, but from a place of faith. Only you, Lord, No. God takes what is humanly impossible for us and makes it possible. In other words, God makes all things possible. Remember the movie Mission Impossible? The central character, Tom Cruise, um, the actor, was set up to be the fall guy when he was trying to reveal and expose who the mold was in the impossible mission force, the IMF a branch of the CIA. The mission pivoted to him to provide his innocence. It seemed like an impossible mission alone, but with the help of a few close friends, his reputation was cleared and an impossible task made possible. In the midst of the valley filled with death, destruction and uncertainty, 
can there be hope for their community to be restored? The Israelites were wondering. Ezekiel begins to realize that in time, life will be restored back to Israel. Yahweh, through the prophet, announces that in time, the enslaved exiled will be set free. And they, Judah, will be restored. As prophesied by Jeremiah, who said, For they will no longer grow food or build or work for their lords but it will be for them and their families. You know, those words must have sounded good. A meditative message, like a breath. And as they breathed in slowly, they breathed in God's promise. And as they slowly exiled, They exhaled God's hope, bringing calmness into their lives once more that was dominated by the pressures of uncertainty. For many of us, the world and our life situation is pretty good. But underlining all of this is the deep longing to be in a place of freedom, not the freedom that suggests that we can do anything that we want, but a freedom that allows hope to take root. Maybe there are some here who are looking out upon that valley of dryness and of lifelessness, a spiritual dryness that has caused your life to forfeit some of the embodiment of God's presence in your life. Maybe there are, maybe your life has been forfeited for all the wrong reasons in not knowing in not knowing if life, if the faith community can ever be restored back to its original intent. Maybe one is viewing the world at this moment as slipping into the abyss because all of its ills, because all of its ills, and hope seems so distant from where you are. So why not throw in the towel? Why not give the ailing world that one last shove sending it to its doom. I bet that's how the Ezekiel, the exiled people of Israel, must have been feeling about their world. To them, there was no end in sight. There was no return date for them to go back home. The God of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac was nowhere to be found. Many had given up of ever returning back to their birthplace. But in letting their faith anchor them in the midst of what Ezekiel was saying gave them hope. Have you ever felt that way? That no matter how much faith you have, how hard you've prayed over it, or how much energy you've expended over the situation, it remains the same? Like that vision of Ezekiel, it remains like the valley of dry bones, lifeless and unresponsive to anything that you have tried, and yet smack in the middle of Israel, decades of exile, a prophet comes and tells them of a vision. He tells them certainly about the dry bones coming to life again, and he does so through his faith in God. When he says to when he responds back to Yahweh, do you believe that these dry bones can live? And he responds, only you know, Lord. Once he releases his control over the situation, faith is breathed into those dry bones, trusting in his response that Yahweh is always in the midst of the impossible, transforming time and situation. Jennifer Henry, the director of Kairos, in a reflection, put it this way. Ezekiel did not deny the reality of death and desolation and justice and pain, but neither does he obscure or limit the promise of God. The message is clear. Transformation is God's signature. No matter how bleak, how hard, how impossible, new life 
justice, peace, dignity can break through. We are called to trans to conspire with God who makes the impossible possible. I like your last statement. We are called upon to conspire with God who makes the impossible possible. To act towards that which we believe, no matter how imperfect or impartial our efforts are, each step forward in justice becomes a witness to the impossible hope. The injustices that were being committed behind the Babylonian gates must have been horrendous. Rendering the exiles to give up and to become lifeless. Ezekiel's vision reminded many of them that Yahweh was still present in creation and in their situation, asking them not to give up what truly mattered to them, their faith. As we begin a new year, some of us, with a little more hope than others, possibly, not to let the valley of dry bones that lay before you and I discourage us from having faith in the living presence of the Holy Other. You know, transformation does not always happen instantly. It's often a slow, tedious process. Transformation does not fit our vision of what will appear. Transformation is limitless and surprising. Transformation takes time for the vision to take on the flesh that brings life, binding the vision to new beginnings, to new life. But once breath is breathed into it, transformation is realized, and new beginnings come into focus. Although what has captured our attention, because it affects us all, is the pandemic that in many ways has stomped out the breath of life in many people's lives, figuratively and real. Yet in spite of all, yet in spite of it, all transformation is never distant from us. It comes bringing new breath to all of us, like the many vaccines that have been approved and over time, more will come. Miracles are happening, and those miracles will cause transformation. And that's just but one example. In an ever-changing world and community, the dry bones that are scattered around us are always in the process, guess what, of being transformed. So let us be as vulnerable as Ezekiel was, placing whatever little faith we have in God, conspire with God to do the impossible, bringing about new beginnings and new life throughout 2021. We have this wonderful opportunity of sharing our vision through the gifts that we bring personally and the gifts that we share on the plate. So Creator, we bring all that we have into your presence. We bring not only our faith and hope, but we surround our gifts with our doubts and the untidiness of our daily living. We offer these gifts in the midst of what we feel and are experiencing that through your gentle and unconditional love, you will blow your spirit of life into them for them to uplift your love and presence in your creation. Let us hear now your spirit's breath that breathes life into our gifts for the upbuilding of one another in Christ's name through minute for mission. Lakshmi, a teenager from West Bengal, India, went missing from her family home just a few months ago. Struggling to survive, Lakshi, Lakshmi was trafficked by her aunt, who promised that she could earn money 
and become independent by dancing. Thankfully, Lakshmi's parents contacted the Diocese of Durgapur, which runs an anti-human trafficking program supported by your mission and service gifts. The diocese intervened, and on the threat of legal action, Lakshmi's aunt returned her to her parents. Human trafficking is a burgeoning crisis in India, where non-governmental organizations estimate that 20 to 65 million people, especially women and girls, are exploited. Girls like Lakshmi are typically trafficked to be sexually exploited or forced into marriage, but they are also trafficked for labor and even for organ harvesting. Sometimes their own families traffic them. Other times, girls are taken by complete strangers who often hunt for victims in places where it is easy to poach them. Around the world, human trafficking is one of the fastest growing criminal enterprises because it is relatively low risk and a high profit potential. That's because unlike drugs, humans can be sold repeatedly. The pandemic has made the problem even worse, especially in parts of the world where the economy is suffering because of COVID-19 crisis. The pandemic has had many repercussions in India. Migrant laborers all over India have lost their jobs, and many have died trying to reach home for the lockdown. The economy took a hit with the largest drop in GDP of 23.9%. Every time India faces a crisis, there is a rise in trafficking in the country, explains Raja Moses, a program coordinator with the Diocese of Durgapur. Your gifts through mission and services, service are making a difference. In partnership with the Diocese of Durgapur, your support helps the anti-trafficking unit find and free women and children who are being trafficked. Once they are freed, your trip, your gifts help victims seek justice for what they have been through and regain a sense of worth and acceptance. Your generosity is also preventative, helping provide the education that is needed to offer protection against predators. With your help, young women like Lakshmi have a second chance at freedom, and families like hers can get their children back safely. Now more than ever, the world needs your generosity. Thank you for your gifts through mission and service. God, we ask your blessings upon these gifts now. Holy One, we dedicate all that we share today and every day to be a blessing to others. Let your endless love carry your blessings through them as you bring healing and hope in them. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let us pray for one another and the world around us. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Another year has come, O oh Lord. Some of the promises have been fulfilled. While there are hopes that are yet to be realized and sorrows unknown that may come our way to bear and to live out. We carry this and more into this new year. 
creator of time and space, with you we stand in the doorway of a new time that calls upon us to have faith and trust in you to help us navigate our way through whatever comes our way. Help us to place our faith always in you and not in our circumstances. We know that this year will be a challenge for the majority of people. The way will not be easy and the journey will be tiring. We also know that you, Creator, are not our bellhop, that our prayers will be answered according to your vision. Like Jesus, who was tested in the desert, he had to relinquish control and place his whole life, his whole self, into your care. Help us to do that, God. You asked us through the prophet Ezekiel today to do the same, to have faith, knowing that the impossible is possible for you. At the beginning of this new year, we pray for our world that is constantly being shattered by false truths and hopes. People's lives being upended by others for the sake of greed, ego, or arrogance. Countries whose peoples are living in exile in their own land. Lives being lost to aggression and racism. Broken lives emotionally bleeding out because of intolerance and hatred. This is the world that we live in, God. This is a lifeless, dry world if we only focus on these circumstances. But you have much more to offer through this creation, God. Open our eyes to see it. We live in a time not only under the cloud of a global pandemic, but under the lack of true concern for the global climate. As we hear politicians and companies determine solutions that don't interfere with the economy or the bottom line of their business. There is much that we will be facing as this new year unfolds, and we pray that not only wisdom intercedes in the decision-making process, but they are supported with compassion and care for our global family and creation. Separated once again by COVID-19, we pray for one another. During this time when our world is once again limited and the walls of loneliness begin to rise up, remind us that in time we will be together again. Remind us too that although the moments we find ourselves, the moment we find ourselves in seem negative and lifeless, you can breathe life into those places, restoring life and hope. Gather us as we take time to pray for those in our world, in our community, and in our circle of living. Hear our prayers. We pray for our faith community, Emmanuel United Church, as it faces its many challenges. Lead us through it all, knowing that what seems impossible and hopeless is not to you. Open us up to the possibilities that we have, to the dreams not even dreamed of how we can continue to be your presence among people in the community we live, work, and play in. So hear our prayers for this ministry at Emmanuel United Church. As individuals, we come with our uncertainties not sure of the outcome of the circumstances that we find ourselves in personally and as a community, but we come like Ezekiel did, responding in faith, 
knowing that you, Yahweh, can make a difference in all our circumstances. So hear our prayers. We pray in Christ's name, the one who calls us by name. Amen. And now I invite you to sing along from Voices United, hymn number 713, I See a New Heaven. And as we go our separate ways today, I lift up the words from Pope John the 13th, where he said, Consult not your fears, but your hopes and your dreams. Think not about your frustration, but about your unfulfilled potential. Concern not yourself with what you tried and failed in, but what is still possible to do. Now is the time to put aside past and present setbacks and failures, and look with confidence to a new day called tomorrow. Let us go in the name of the one who breathes life into all things. May the love of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit give us the strength to live in these new beginnings. Amen. <laughs>